Today, I'm going to give you guys every single piece of information I know that will help you become a better shooter on NBA 2K24. Now, this video took some time to make, so please like the video and subscribe if you want to see more tip videos like this. Now, honestly, the most important thing when it comes to playing any online game is having good internet and making sure you have low latency. Although playing with an ethernet cable is optimal, you could still play on Wi-Fi and shoot without any issue. This is actually what I do. Now, for monitors, if you want to shoot better, you need to be playing on a monitor with a low response time, somewhere between the one to four millisecond second range. So in other words, playing 2K on your TV might be one of the reasons why you can't shoot so well. So the first thing we are going to do before anything is adjust a few settings as well as controller settings. So in the game's main menu, go to feature settings and scroll down till you see an option called shot feedback. Now you are going to want to switch this setting to all shots, which is going to allow you to see the shot feedback for every single player's shot, including your own, which is a useful tool to have when trying to time your shots. And we need to move on to the controller settings. And one thing that sticks out is the shot timing visual cue. Changing your shot timing visual cue will allow you to have a preferred cue to when to release the button when timing your shot. Now one big thing I would like to point out is that changing your shot timing visual cue will not change how slow or how fast the animation speed of your jump shot is. It only changes how soon you release the button on your controller to time your shot. Next we have to talk about the jump shot meter which we are going to turn off. Having the meter off gives a bigger make percentage boost than ever and with the added latency of online play the jump shot meter is just not a reliable way to time your shot on NBA 2K24. Now, when it comes to shooting, we have to talk about one big thing, which is the builder. Depending on how high you either upgrade your mid-range or three-point shot will determine what jump shot animations you can use on your player. For new players, I do not recommend you make a build shorter than six foot five because small builds require a greater level of scoring ability that many novice players do not have. So when it comes to my six foot five to six foot nine players, I recommend that you get at least an 87 mid-range or three-pointer so you can unlock the Tracy McGrady jump shot, which is by far the consensus best jump shot in the game. Now just to be safe and make sure you get better shooting badges, I recommend go no lower than a 93 mid-range shot and an 86 three-pointer for players that are new to this game. With those ratings, you will get badges like Catch and Shoot on Hall of Fame, as well as Blinders and Deadeye on Gold, which are amazing badges in this game. Now for my players that are 6'10 and up, if you make a big that can shoot, you could still make a build with a 93 mid-range and 86 three-pointer all the way up to the height of 7 foot 1. Now you can go lower, but again, do not go lower than an 82 mid-range and about a 76 three on a big man build or else it will be really difficult to time your shot. Now we talked about it briefly but jump shots are going to be really important when it comes to becoming a better shooter on this game. So when it comes to the best jump shots again for my 6'5 to 6'9 players I recommend you use base Tracy McGrady. Now for the releases you could use many animations which include Kyle Korver, Tari Eason, and Troy Brown Jr. Now for my players 6'10 and up with lower three pointers you can use base Jonathan Isaac with release combinations of Tim Duncan, Alex Len, Jaron Jackson Jr., Franz Wagner, and many more. However if you have at least an 86 mid range or three pointer on a 610 build you could use michael porter jr which is a personal favorite base of mine while we're at it comment down your favorite jump shot below maybe somebody will see that jump shot and start using it and they could actually start shooting again now in order to become a better shooter on this game make sure you put some time in to upgrade your badges and add hot zones to your my player you could do both of these things while playing my career games and playing on the street ball courts one of my personal favorite ways to grind badges in hot zones is playing street ball in sunset park against disco which could be located on this part of the map now, Games versus Disco can be repeated over and over again, which are great for badge and hot zone grinding. The best part about playing this level is that Disco is five foot seven, so it doesn't take long to learn how to just shoot over them without any issue. And once you've gained some badges and hot zones, there is another location in the city that you need to go to every Monday to help you become a more lethal shooter. This location is the Art of Shooting Gym, which can be located here on the map on the northeast side of the city. This is the place where you could come and get lethal zones, which have a much higher make percentage than normal hot zones. Now, if you need to you could also remove cold zones and add hot zones on your player but please understand that the only way to get a lethal zone in a specific area is that you need to have a hot zone there first now in my personal opinion there's going to be no better place to learn how to shoot than the gatorade facility which could be located here on the map one big thing about the gatorade facility is that you also could do your workouts in here which help with badge progression as well as getting you a second stamina bar for an entire week in the gatorade facility you could change difficulty and also will be playing with the latency that you would get in modes like theater, park, and rec. The Gatorade facility is a great place to warm up and learn your shot timing and understand the visual cue of your jump shot. Now for me, I always look at the arms of my player to properly determine when to release my shot because once you incorporate some other moves like dribble pull-ups, step bags, or post fades into your bag, you will also time those shots by looking at the arms of your my player because they will have the same release you equipped on your jump shot. Now that you have gone through all of these tips, now it is time to play online and understand what shots you can or cannot shoot. The biggest thing that I see people struggle with is not shooting their wide open 
simply catch and shoot shots when they need to be taken because they will be the easiest shots for you to hit and will also force your man to guard you even when you don't have the ball. When it comes to creating your own shot, I usually go to the mid-range fade as my first option and it has become a deadly move for me to score with. One other big thing is to make sure you equip the shooting takeover in games to make your life easier. Now this is the jumping off point. That is pretty much every single shooting tip I can give you to become a better shooter on NBA 2K24. Now it just comes down to putting reps in and learning your shot and also learning what you can and cannot shoot in online games on NBA 2K24. Thanks for watching.